Well, look here. You are listening to someone who is bold, authentic, diverse, unpredictable. Baby, I am unapologetically Ramon, and you have entered my zone, the QB zone, baby. Hello, somebody. <laughs> time i'm very excited to get into it i have two for two familiar faces to everybody and a brand new face had to even even the plan feel a little bit usually i'm quite outnumbered but today we're going to talk about a subject that i'm curious and intrigued to talk about just because of the diversity of my guests today uh, the topic for today is going to be double standards and relationships so first off, I'm going to introduce my guest. You guys know Shanae George Stringer, who has been on here before. Lauren Gomes, who has been on here for <laughs> a few times. And this is actually a topic that she brought up, and I was excited. And I'm going to say a very, very special guest who came highly reviewed, and that is Mr. Alex Martin. What's going on, sir? What's up? I'm good. <laughs> So in talking about double standards, there are some double standards that are in the favor of women. There are some double standards in the favor of men. Let's go right ahead and go into what we was talking about right before we started, having a bunch of people, having a bunch of lovers, a bunch of significant others. A man can have four, five, eight. It's celebrated. It's, it's, it's normal. No one's really going to say anything. You might give him a side eye, but for the most part, we're expected to be conquerors. We're expected to have a few situationships. A female have two. Society or some people will say she's a hoe. Lauren. Yes. <laughs> since you have shared some very um, interesting and transparent stories on previous episodes, uh -huh. I'm sure you're ready to go right in. You are expected as a lady, especially someone born and raised in the church, to conduct your life in a certain way. You sit here and have a main dude and a side piece. You're going to be talked about X, Y, Z, whatever, whatever. That's by most people. You know, you have mm -hmm. people like me who don't give a damn. You do what you do. Right. But then we can have Sir Alex over here who can have eight women. He can have seven, a different one. And you king. It makes no sense to me. It makes no sense. I could be the queen of my domain and have multiple, you know, partners. It doesn't have to be sexual. And a lot of times people often assume that having multiple relationships equals equal, excuse me, equals sexuality. And that's, in my opinion, that's not the case. Suppose I just want a money man. Suppose I just need somebody to pay my bills and do whatever that needs to be done and take care of business. And then why, why, why my cousin looking at me like that? <laughs> he done set up on the couch. <laughs> right, he got caught. He needs to say, wait, 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 what? <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, you see what I'm saying? It's okay for me to have a money man. And then I just want to have a dude that just, you know, knock my bricks off every now and again. Or two, you know, but that in that aspect... It is shown, or excuse me, shunned on a woman to, to have that part because, you know, she's supposed to be child clearing and a child of God and all this other stuff. And it is just, to me, it is not, what's the word I'm looking for? It ain't I'm right. pretty sure you don't think it's fair. And especially with you being a woman who beats who always kind of, go out and beat of your own drum, I'm sure it, it drives you crazy at times because you want to express yourself. Right. You want to explore. I mean, I do it anyway. <laughs> Whatever. 
the name? What about you? So for me personally, I I don't know. I have a huge issue with double standards. Point blank period. I don't subscribe to them, don't believe in them, right? Um, and those who've seen me on episodes know that I'm also ordained in ministry. All that aside, I think that a lot of it is or societal um, norms, but we have accepted them as norms, right? And so at the end of the day, you don't have to because what makes a man's body um, or what makes, I guess, makes our bodies not equitable, right? Because I look at the fact that when I've talked before about relationships and I know there's so much talk about purity culture, which can be very toxic for women. Um, but then I look at men, like, why don't you value your seed? Why are you okay planting your seed in multiple fields? Uh, put some respect on your stuff too, right? Don't just leave it to the woman that she's not respecting herself. My question to a man is, why don't you value your vessel as much as you put value on a woman's vessel at the end of the day? Um, if you choose to have multiple partners, because I'm learning as I've, um, even I recently got on this dating app and I'm not a big fan of them. And I see so many people that's like, I'm ethically non-monogamous. What does that even mean? What does that mean? <laughs> what are, just say you like to have multiple partners. To come up with all these fancy terms is ridiculous. Um, you and your partner get it in with multiple people. That's just point blank period and you're on here looking for someone else and probably somebody else for both of y'all there. That's just what that is. And so to me, I know that just by societal norms that for a while, a lot of women agreed to, I think that's shifting now that, yeah, oh my gosh, if I had multiple partners, how is somebody going to view me? You know, should I not share my body count? But if he finds out that I've had more partners, I may have had more partners than him. Does that mean I'm not worthy? Does that mean I'm not worthy of being in a loving, healthy relationship? Does that make me less valuable as a human being? Um, because I may have been more sexually liberated than what society approves, but at the end of the day, it's about me. You know, what I chose and decisions that I make, and so at the end of the day, if we want to go biblically, it's like you don't even have the room to judge me. And a lot of it comes from church because even in the church, we know things aren't always equitable, right? Women have not Ooh, always <laughs> equally in the church. A lot of the messaging that was projected into the church was like, women, you remain in this box, in this category. But we saw in the church with a lot of men, including the people who were spreading these sermons, they were mm -hmm. but not doers of the word. I have a problem with that. If you're going to tell me to hear and do, you need to also be hearing and doing as well because it popped down. And so a lot of us know that we have either sat under some leaders or know of leaders who, yeah, they had an outside family or, or maybe it was the first lady who had an outside person or another child and even some well-known, even in these early current times, there are some pastors that out here living a best life and it's contrary to the word of God that they they release every Sunday. Yes, so we have the right as people to ultimately determine what norms we want to accept and what norms we're going to subscribe to. And at this point, I'm not subscribing to those old societal norms because they're not equitable. And I believe if I can have multiple people, if that was my choice, that's not me personally. Right. Um, I'm not less valuable as a person or a human being than a man that got 20, 30 bodies. Or mm -hmm. Mr. Alex. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I'm not getting in this. Because, um, Why are you not getting in no, this? You know we because, talk about this all the time. Let me tell you, all right? If we can talk about the Bible, and we're using religion into this here, in this topic, what happened is People take it in a different contrast because at the end of the day, let's keep it 100. David had about 150 concubines. He had 250 wives. So when he had Uriah killed, put on the front line and get killed, 
to Bathsheba, it was told to him when God sent a messenger on to him to tell him a parable about this man was raised with a sheep. His family was raised with a sheep and they killed the sheep because the king had a royal guest come in and they killed a man's sheep to prepare a meal for that royal guest. And the messenger and David reply was that whoever should cast, whoever should cast and did that crime should pay 10 times full. And the messenger said, that's it's you. Because the Lord said, if you ask of me, I will give on to you. So in America, where it went wrong is America decided to state in how you should date and how many multiple partners you should have. And it's not true. It is based on as long as you could have more than one wife and you treat all of them the same, it is the right way to do it. This <laughs> you can say what? You can all you want, my dear. But he's and right, I'm though. He's, he's, he's I'm right. Listening. Let's I'm listening. It. Let's research it. Yeah. Because in Africa, I was just thinking that. Yeah. If we were talking see, about that, yeah. In every other country, they do it. So what makes them wrong and make us right? Because at the end of the day, majority rule, right? That ain't how they say. Okay, so if majority rule, Africans do it. <laughs> the Indian, um, Indian cultures. You see? So therefore, who say what is wrong and what is wrong? The difference between the male and the female, right? Because we're talking about double standards. The difference between the females and the male, remember, Females are called reproducers, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So understand this. A female is called a reproducer. You guys understand that you guys are called a tree. We can't be a tree. Cause we can't, if you give me, if, you give, if any female give me any kind of juice or water, come anything, I can't give she nothing. <laughs> I could give you some, I could give some water and come, and you would give me a baby. At the end of the day, let's keep it 100. So, therefore, this is where the double standards come in. Because at the end of the day, when we do it, the difference is we doing, we call, the Bible says, multiply and replenish the earth. Right. Okay. I was just waiting for it. I was waiting for it. That's not right, man. So it is. It is. It is. The difference with that there, based on this, is the reason why it's double standard. Is because if we do it, we know all our kids get named Martin. All my kids, I can drop a million seeds in a million women. All my kids is going to name Martin. If a woman do that and she have a million men. <laughs> All her kids is not gonna name the same name. And yes, they can where... have the same name. What they now? They have my name. No, it ain't work no like they got yeah. different daddies. They're not gonna have the same exactly. name. What I got my mama last name. Them no, so that's that's, that's, it. Uh, that's different. Let's say Ruth, Ruflin, Sister Gomes, go have her a baby with somebody else. You better not yeah. say that. She gonna give him. Ruflin. She gonna get. She gonna get that outside baby. Elder Gomes last name? That's you crazy. Better believe it. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you if he accepted as he is, you better give you better give that to his daddy last name. <laughs> but like if you take my take me and my siblings, for example, mm. me and my sister have different daddies. We all have different daddies. But me and my sister have my mom's last name because the men were not in, in her life. My brother's father was in his life. He has her, he has his last name. So I think, you know, picking back off of what he said, the laws of the land kind of got involved with what is done in Laos spiritually because it's only illegal because the constitution, the laws have made it wrong. And then society has been attached onto that. But like you were saying, if you look at the different culture, you can have as many wives as you want. The only requirement is that he has to financially be able to provide for all of them. That's the only so part saying, If I can financially take care of myself and my children. No, no, no. No, we're no. talking about the man. This okay. Is, this is, so again, you, double standard. No, no, it's not double standard. Because at the end of the day, right? 
it's we're talking about not your children we're talking about adults okay so it ain't about listen it came with this it came with this stipulation that man is the head of the household and a man should take care of the household oh, God, yeah right let's keep it 100 so you a woman could never be the head of the household is god man woman children and rah 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 and all of that that's how we go let's keep it 100 that's how the pyramid go no yes or no okay can i interject yes. Yes. That's what I want to know. So let's, go let's go back a couple of things right oh, Jesus. before the fall of adam and eve god didn't give adam multiple women God, God only gave Adam one woman. It that was his original design okay, you're before, right. before mm -hmm. the fall. So let's start there. Now, in addition to that, yes, we see multiple examples biblically, and then we'll go culturally, biblically, where, yes, a lot of kings did, in fact, have wives as well as concubines but we can't negate the fact that there were also couples in the bible where there was just one god honors covenant regardless whether your covenant you have sister wives or sister husbands <laughs> you and the one so we can be like well the bible they had a bunch of concubines but abraham did it Mary and Joseph were one. Elizabeth and her husband were one. So we can't just go to the couple examples we know that they are. When the, in fact, in the Bible, there are some couples where it's just one. Now let's go culturally, right? Because you said that the laws change, whatever the case may be. Now, culturally, yes, we know in places like Africa and places like the Middle East that the norm and that is customary i will say going now forward in this modern century you don't necessarily see that as much where they have multiple wives just putting that out there doesn't mean that it's still not a cultural aspect for them but again people do what works for them my issue is if we want to talk american culture if we want to talk modern day we want to talk about current economic situations. The average black man, since we're all of here are brown people, people of color, the average black man don't have the finances to maintain multiple women to a certain level of standard of care. So for me to just accept that, yes, because our great, 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 great ancestor before they got over here, um, <laughs> wives that I should be subjected to multiple women because that was a culture that we weren't even raised up on our our well, grand to exactly yes, no, not women well. Good. No. so I'm let me just finish my sentence so with that being said it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to accept that as customary because that's what worked then talk about what works now because how is that working for us as a culture and community when we have all these broken families because we want to be with everybody over here and share a little bit and dibble dabble here half cake and eat it. we're the least married culture Amen. we're the least <laughs> we have the like i mean marriage is on the rise for us as a people but we're the black women are the least married in america why why, why? I think, I think that's a whole different subject I think where it happens present day is that for the past few decades, Black, American, and even Caribbean, the man has a wife. The man has side women. The wife knows about it. She's quiet. She says nothing. I've seen it in my church. I've seen it in the, the families of my friends, where as long as this man provides for that main woman, that wife, those kids, as long as he provides, she don't care what he doing out there. I'm going to be honest. I was raised by a couple. That was the dynamics. We knew and heard that my granddaddy X, Y, Z, yada, yada, yada. But he took care of home. Ain't no hoe never called the house. Ain't no hoe never come knock on the door. Ain't no side kids come over here and ask for money. Because, you know, I, I was spoiled, so I'm not sharing shit. No way. But we didn't deal with those things. Nothing ever came to my grandma's daughter. And I tell you this thing. 
when some shit did come to her doorstep, I guarantee you she reacted in a way that didn't happen again. So I think what is going on in our culture is as long as home is taken care of, you don't care what he's doing out there. It's nothing's changed. It's just more secretive now and it's more accepted. Women are allowing themselves. Mm. Let, let me let me let me because if you don't if you don't say anything, if you don't remove the, the, yourself, there's a generational there's a generational difference now because grandma, daddy, and uh oh, oh, grandma, daddy, and um, I'll say me, so to say, um, that whole knowing who the side chick is and not saying anything, that's a whole different type of generation. These little kids now, everything is social media. Look at, for example, the whole Derek Jackson case. That was all over social media because his side women decided that they couldn't take it enough and decided to tell their story. So back then versus now is completely different. These little, these little side chicks don't know their place. They don't know how to keep their mouth shut. If but you that also have wives that are allowing it. She ain't going nowhere. They're just she wife. Nowhere. I'll be surprised if she go anywhere. And that could be, different, re that could be different reasons why she won't. It could be different reasons. A lot of men, a lot of women, excuse me, can know about the side chicks. The side chicks know about the wife. And as long mm -hmm. as we're not in the same environment or the same whatever, as long as we don't cross paths, we're going to act like each other don't exist. But I'm going to say, but that's in certain sense and situation. We go back again, so we brought up generational differences. Mm -hmm. When our grandmothers or great-grandmothers were accepting of that, what was the alternative? Where right. were they about to go with they six, seven kids? Right. I was about to take all them on because trust when they finally did get uh Billy John to come court and, and get out the house, mama wasn't looking for them to come back. And mama right. sure wasn't looking for them to come back with all them children. Now right. to the point where even if my big mama them knew that uh, little Susie was around there getting beat by Billy John, they still didn't necessarily want her to come back. With all them chilling. Now, they might have talked to Billy John and be like, listen, you know, go easy on, on, on my daughter, my granddaughter. But they weren't expecting her to come back up in their house. The okay. difference is women got options. I'm not dependent on, I don't have to be dependent on you to keep the lights on. You don't have to be correct. I'm dependent upon you to keep the mortgage. I don't have to be dependent upon you to make sure that my kids eat. So that right along the fact that women are now more educated, women are now more developed emotionally, mentally, they're more secure in who they are and their identity. And they know that their identity is not solely based on the fact that they are a wife and a mother and that they do have a voice. Okay, so we're beyond the 1920s, right? And mm -hmm. we're even 50s. So now I don't have to accept that you have another woman. Whether she show up Today, tomorrow, or never. She may not show up to the day of your funeral. I don't have to accept that. So any woman that's accepting that knowingly now, it's by one, by choice. And two, I would just consider, well, what is it that he's providing that you can't provide for yourself? Or are you so in, are you so secure in your identity as just being a wife that you would just hold on to that instead of mm -hmm. having of respect for yourself because then I look at the fact that you know at the end of the day daughters date they daddy so do you want you're telling your daughters if you have a if you're a parent that it's okay for your 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 husband to have other women but baby as long as the bills get paid and the kids are tended to he he got a house he might hit you a, a time or two but that's okay baby you know <laughs> good man like is, is that like is that the message that we're promoting because i feel like to me where that double standard came back is just generationally yeah Lot of other options they weren't educated like where are we gonna go with five kids and who was gonna hire you and you might not even have a high school diploma mm. 
to be with this man if we want to talk caribbean you left the country to be with this man i, I know of a person that's a perfect example mom left the country be with her um husband and move with his family and he was totally abusive to the point where i mean up until the the daughters were up in age and finally was like mom you got to let this go like i will not my friend literally told her mom i will not come back to this house until you leave him already we grew up with like we had enough of this so we we have to like the the, the generations have changed and i'm sorry what my grandmama might have accepted i ain't got to accept i think generations have changed but i think the common that concept is still being passed down in the sense that a man is gonna always cheat and so you have girls to this day that are our generation that i've heard that come from them that they mama or their grandma tell them, a man is gonna always cheat. So that's something you just have to deal with. As long as he respects you, as long as he provides, as long as he is checking all the other box, and that's the only box he don't check, don't lose what you've built because this one box isn't checked. I know a lot of people, our generation, that that's the mentality they're told. So yeah, they are going to accept it even though they may have the degrees, even though they may have the income, they could be a, they could have the same income he does. But I'm not going to mess up my happiness, or they're not going to mess up their happiness off of this one thing. They tolerate. They they find a way to tolerate. So then, are they really happy? Um, happiness, everybody's definition of happy is different. Let's be real about it. Let me ask all. Let me ask the question, and everybody be honest. You, everybody, you follow along. You with someone, you've been with a person, what, said, said 20 years, 15 years? You guys accomplish a whole lot. Are you gonna let that go for one random? Oh, let's, let's keep it 100. Uh, four or five random check, meaning that you have a business together, y'all build a nice home, y'all build companies, y'all have employees. No, let's keep it 100. Are you going to let it go for I, one or two random female? Me? I've, I've been... I, I can't so say person that. that was cheating. I and <laughs> yeah, like for me, I, and I can speak from my own experience. But that, that belief, I'm going to make your life hell. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like to me, I've been in that experience. I was engaged to a person we dated for in total six years. And I want to say the first incident of infidelity probably was like, maybe like almost going into a year of the relationship. Then it was like a year, things were really great. And then we got engaged. Then once we got engaged, the habits picked back up. And so I called up the engagement, but we still continued to date, but there was still evidence even if it wasn't direct evidence that he actually committed the physical act, the attempts were clearly there. So for me personally, no, it's nothing I said. I honestly believe that's a relationship that if it wasn't for me leaving. We would have continued on with the relationship because even now he's married to a person he met while we were together. Um, and even while they were dating, was still trying to make connections with me. So for me personally, no, I, I don't want to go into a marriage where I have to be one. And I think it's more than just my happiness. I look at health um, as a factor and the potential of outside kids. Like there are a lot of other factors that comes when a person is cheating on you. And so for me. I had a conversation the other day and it was like, uh, if one incident is that worth, you know, you losing it all. I think that there's some conversations that definitely would need to be had, but whether it's a year, 10, 20 years, cause I want to say, Ramon, you brought up respect for me. That was my reason leaving. You might have loved me or believed you love me, but you didn't respect me. Respect, I mean, for men, respect is everything. Because I can even say in the incident where I finally decided, well, you know what, if you out here getting it, I'm about to be out here getting it too, you would have thought that he needed to be checked into a mental hospital. 
See, what I find yes. interesting. Why are you upset about what I'm doing the same thing that right. you did to me and I did it once? I took a lot of multiple occurrences from you, cry, ugly cry, broke up, all kind of stuff. It didn't move you. But when I <laughs> do what you did, now you you and your homeboy plotting planet like so y'all just gonna go to jail. Like I'm confused. Like what what what's going on here? I, like why are you so perturbed or why are you so bothered? Mm -hmm. that, that double standard. So to me it's that's what I was gonna mention. It's 20 years worth you losing what we built together. Mm -hmm. it, it, it goes both ways. Are you willing to lose all that we built? All that we created? For, Just for a side piece. For something that's temporary, something that's fleeting, something that obviously couldn't give you outside of what? Sexual pleasure? Because cheating is more than just, oh, I'm not getting satisfied at home because spiritually it can be other things. Uh, and background, it has a lot of other factors when people cheat. But to me, as of right now, cheating it cheating is where I bow out any relationship. I know, I, I got you. So let's let's be real about it. You saying cheating? Cheating is always a sexual thing. Let me keep it one hundred. I'm gonna tell you right up off the top. Okay. Yeah, I did it. And <laughs> if the sex ain't no good, I'm gonna be tell you the truth. Sometime I'm be running this. I raise my hand. Number one to do it. Okay. <coughs> So oh, at the end okay. of the day, at the end of the day, that's most part of it. It can be 90% of the cheat. Second, after the next 5%, it's going to be, yeah, so back to where we were saying, right? Where we caught, where we get caught off. All right. So I understand everything you were saying that females don't be have to be accepted to all of this at the end of the day when you love somebody no matter what it is it is not it's not a point of putting up it's a point of trying to love this person back into loving you as much as you love them so so so, so let me get this straight i should love a man that consistently cheats on me? Who call it cheating? I answer that question. I would like to know who call it cheating. That is, now that is true. It even speaks about adultery. But, step, but, but put, 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 put in the Bible to the side. Put in the Bible to the side. People do... Yeah. I mean, the courts call it adultery. Like, you can... Part of your divorce could be reason. <laughs> that, just to do, that just has to do with divorce and who going to get what money. The courts really could care two craps about adultery. But, <laughs> but it's grounds for divorce. What that means is, they consider it valid. Couples define what's cheating for them. Right. That okay. If Lauren is in a relationship, XYZ may be cheating. They may not, that may not be cheating for me. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's when you when ask the question. Speaking, what, you're... Peter inside of multiple kitty cats. That's different. But for some women, sexting is cheating. For some women, right. if you send it, if you send it back news, that's cheating. Whereas with some women, I could care two craps about it. You go to a club and you see your man dancing with a chick. Some chicks may consider that cheating. Some may not. So I think you have to define what's cheating for you. For example, Monique, she is notorious for having this conversation about her and her husband having an open marriage. Yes, And her thing is, as long as there's a conversation, as long as there is protection, she, she's not going to consider cheating. It's not going to be something that's going to be up for a conversation as far as whether or not she will stay because it's not a deal breaker for them. So I think you just have to define what's cheating for you. So it's easy to say that every relationship should have a definition of what cheating is before it is actually established. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot a part, of that should be a part of the dating conversation fail because there's never that conversation never happens. Correct. Like for me, for example, I'm gonna be laid up with who I want to lay up with because I ain't got no ring on my finger. 
But, but then, does but, that then make- but then, here's the double standard. If I do that, it don't matter who I'm laying up with, but here's a double standard because I am making that choice for myself. That other person may feel like, or excuse me, not the other person, that man may feel like his ownership of me, and I say that lightly, his ownership of me, he doesn't want me to be laying up with other these other people. Mm-hmm. He don't want me to do that. No, let's not, that let's, ain't talk, right. let's talk about your ownership business. Mm-hmm. The only song a man could say he own you or feel like he ain't nobody own nothing. I ain't no slave. Let me Listen, tell you, hush. <laughs> the only song <laughs> I know I, I keep messing with him. <laughs> so the only song that could ever happen if you give that man any kind of inclination or make him feel like that. Men do not do that unless a woman makes them feel that way. A man ain't gonna just come out and the blue one's like, oh, that good <laughs> cat is mine. You feel me? You feel me? It's and, not gonna be that. Unless unless he's talking in the bedroom. You know what I mean? I'm about to say, cause they get it one time and they be like, it's mine. No, it's not. <laughs> You see, if y'all gonna stop, if y'all gonna stop pick up these mangy random mutts, then you will have no problem. You feel me? Now even the ones in business suits. No, boo boo. No, you ain't somebody but this one is. I'll tell you straight up like it is. You was born with this shit, and you went die with it. So you gonna give it to who the hell you want to? I don't give a damn about it. So guess what? Me and be what? <laughs> I'm dead. I'm so sure. Alex, I'm let me dead. let me ask you a question, Alex. And she kind of and Shanae kind of brought it up. We all know that as men, we can she own a woman a thousand times and we expect her to forgive us each time. Each to a certain time. extent. But if she cheats on us one time, and I'm not gonna say all most men, if she cheats one time, we're done, we're out the door, she's a horrible person. One of the things I, I remember a, a, a friend of mine had, his response to that was, once again, we talk about the female body being there for reproduction. So the expectation and the way the female body is viewed is totally different. Nothing's being born and, and, and created. Nothing's coming in and out of us. So therefore, our body is not that we don't respect it. The expectation is just different. So for example, if you say for you know a chick go out and she have sex with a dude, we can get over it a little better as long as she didn't suck his dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I we, you that because I ain't kissing we, you again. You we as men, you. we as men view that as something oh, different. Like we, you can't be going around here putting. It's bad enough you let them in you, but then you're gonna do that see, too. See, what about when he put his mouth? Standards. But so well, once have again, a known hoe. what goes you on with your body is different community. than ours. You have a known hoe in the community, right? This I'm talking about a female. Uh huh. Let let me. That's a community bank. Just chill out. The community. It's bank. a community bank, right? Okay. But then you have the known dude that be smashing everybody, and he's the king. No, it ain't about the king. Let me okay. Let me kill this whole story, okay? There's a difference. We. What's the difference in both of them? Be fucking. The difference is. Even tell you the difference. I can't receive. That's the difference. You we don't deposit, receive if you got condoms on. What you receive? But we still shoot it. Can y'all shoot something to us? Yeah. It's called squirting. But does it go inside of us? If you open your mouth, it do. My <laughs> <laughs> cousin, I love you. <laughs> I know you wasn't ready. <laughs> it's a, let me take a sip. <laughs> It's okay. It probably happened. You didn't even realize, but it's okay. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Cheese and bread. So now y'all understand the difference between the man and the woman? The man, we... Oh, yeah. Listen, we could go and we could drop in every female, right? A female can receive that. Y'all cannot put anything inside of us. Y'all can just wet the sun. That's it. Right? Let's be honest. Am I right? Correct me when I'm wrong. I don't okay. have a problem with that. So it is fair that's where most of the standards come in because 
that's why you see when a ma mother have a child, it's a difference between a male child and a female child. They're because more protective the son the could drop in a female and he bringing home no baby, but the daughter They're will bring home a baby. Yeah. Mm hmm you, you can twist your jaw all you want, this lady. <laughs> Again, I don't subscribe to those double standards. And here's the thing, Shanae. I don't. We're not saying it's right. We're just saying this is how and why men think and and respond the way we do. It. That's just what it is. Now, and it's one, wrong. Listen, one another double standard that I want to um, mention has to more so do with employment and provide. So. When a woman works long hours, she is scorned of being a careerist, putting mm -hmm. this before her family. But when a man does the same, we are considered hardworking, a great provider, and we're praiseworthy. What are y'all thoughts on that? Totally disagree. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, it's we live in a current society where honestly, we have that whole, you know, reality of that a lot of times it just takes two, right? Um, to maintain comfortably. And even that can still be a struggle for two people coming together. And again, it goes back to on what do you value? Like what is wrong with a woman who values her career or who values her profession that she's going into or has gone into what or has invested into her education. What is so wrong with that compared to a man who essentially has done the same thing? I was just reading the book um, or snippets of a book, and I think it's great. It's written by a man that's divorced, also ministry, but he focused more on conflict resolution for relationships. And he's very candid. And he talks about that whole concept because a lot of this generates from the conversation of, of gender roles, right? I know we're talking about, you know, career and everything, but it comes down to that whole underlying foundation of who's going to provide, who's going to protect, and what does that ultimately look like? And we've gotten so accustomed society-wise where we want people to maintain certain tasks, but we've attached tasks to roles. And there's a total difference because tasks, and he describes it as a task is anything I can pay somebody else to do, like cooking. In a household, you can pay a maid to take on the task of cleaning. You can pay a chef to take on the task of cooking in your household. So to just project that on like a wife doesn't care about her house, her family, or her man because she wants to rise up in the ranks of her corporate entity or she's trying to grow her business to six figures. That doesn't mean that she's less of a woman or less of a wife or less of a mother because she's also career oriented or she's focused on her career. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think, again, it goes back to having those conversations prior to getting into marriages or long-term relationships about what is it that you're expecting and what is it that you're wanting. I have an issue when men want to project because of my um, makeup as a female that I have to take on certain tasks, not talking about my role as a wife, I have to take on certain tasks just because I'm a woman. And that I may even have to sacrifice some of my wants because you have now associated me being female or woman that I have to complete all these tasks or that means who I am as a woman is not being fulfilled. So, and all of that there, you say, right? It all boils down to this one simple thing, balance. Mm -hmm. You have yin and you have yang. You have balance in life. If you don't have balance, you have chaos one way or the other. So it's not a more career driven as a male or a female. I don't care what sex it is, what gender it is. If you don't have balance, you will have chaos. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing wrong with a woman try to be career driven, but at the same time, in order for you to have a successful business, you got to balance your personal life and your business life. 
and that will take your business further than you ever would imagine because therefore you will not be stressful because your man is like, oh, you, 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 you barely home. So now let's, let's be honest. We, we can, we can I'm gonna roll this into where we talked to before because you are not home a lot and you trying to drive your business to six figure. Guess what, who happened? Oh, you cheating on me? Next, why, why are you is coming. <laughs> next door Keisha coming. <laughs> and he is better to next door Keisha. She always working. And then next door Keisha <laughs> is, oh, come boo boo, leave on my shoulder. Oh. And then next thing you know, one thing lead to the next. So mm -hmm. if you don't have balance. That's crazy, man. You Keisha have working and lurking. She been waiting. Hello. <laughs> Keisha probably was always there. <laughs> she always looking. Uh, listen, listen, let's That's keep a it whole real. other topic. Let's keep it real. When the cats are away, the what? Hello, mm. somebody. The mouse. So if you leave your back door open, you can't get mad if somebody running there and steal your whole house. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> so let's keep it real. So if you don't want King next door Keisha in your business, I can't handle your business. I cannot balance your business. If you can put a hundred percent in your business, a hundred percent in your relationship. Okay. You understand? But don't just be like, oh, I'm gonna put hundred here and put fifty here. The scale can be like this. And then next door Keisha can come up add on to that to make the scale balance out. And then you mad because Keisha filling in your role. You make, you shouldn't be mad. Take Keisha out and get her nails done, toe done and say, appreciate it. Oh my God. You I know? can't. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. You think, listen, <laughs> let me tell you, my baby right there. If a nigga is right on a DC, <laughs> nigga is touching around the DC like 50,000. Wait, 000. you let me make that comment at the beginning and she right now? My oh, she right. Because, you know, we always talk about let stuff me tell you. Like all the time. Oh, my Lord. Lord. No, you, she you want to for yourself? real. Come here, babe. Tell him. Let <laughs> she tell y'all. She going to tell you. She gonna... This is real shit. <laughs> tell him. <laughs> he said he make a comment about me. Look, <laughs> look. The comment was, I'm a hoe or something. Uh, some, some shit like that. Oh. And he got five, eight of them. Let me answer to that one. <laughs> When I put five or six years in it, anybody that's on the side, they're welcome to do whatever they want to, just so long as it benefits me. I know that's right. At the same time, I'm going to put it this way. When he comes home, he knows what's there. Okay. Okay. No, since we're talking about that, I asked about somebody approach her, a female. Oh, I had one to approach me. What you into that? What you wanted to hear. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? That was juicy. I had one to approach me. She would tell me about him. I said, good, you were doing what I couldn't do. But then at the same time, I told him, he yeah. been with me for five years. Oh, he couldn't stay with me. He going home. Okay, so where do you think he was going? Right yeah. here where he at right now. Laid Hello. up. Hello. Yeah. yeah. So she was like, oh, I'm so done with him. He's sleeping with that one, this one. He wanted me to have a baby. I said, really? He wanted you to have a baby for him? You know something different that I don't know. <laughs> mm, have mercy. Have so, mercy. so let me let me clear the air at the end of the day right he got his babes at the end of the day like i told you if a man is gonna give up and make sure i'm good boo boo i take it out to the nail salon pedicure <laughs> manicure taking a shopping a nice dress nice shoes hair done <laughs> Baby, how fun. But you know what? It's so funny y'all said that because there's this pastor I like to follow. He's in Texas. And he said if a dude ever tries to holler at his wife, he's going to have to make one hell of a lot of money because they are a package deal. We both like diamonds. We both like to go out to eat. So if you take her out, I'll come around. You gotta gotta do it with me you too. Have. You're right. Well, you are right. That's the truth. If you do it for one, you may as well do it for the next one. Right. So, so therefore, do you think I'm gonna call her cheated? No, boo boo. Because guess what? When I go to the bank, you're gonna see this. I know that's right. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you. When you see me pull up in that nice, when you see me, that nice car, pulling me. 
Yeah. yeah. Thank you, bro. Yeah. You take care of home, and you're not letting somebody who's insignificant mess up with y'all them invested time and effort into. Uh, and they've been right. together for years. And that's you're right, and that's why I tell you one thing about it. And no female could tell her <laughs> who had inside where we live look like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever I do, I'm gonna do it in the street. But I can never bring no trouble to her home. Right. And none of them craziness. And that's one thing. When when crazy Dodo came and approached her, that's how she called me right away and called. I, I called used her. to work with this crazy Dodo. Oh no. Oh, I called him and told him come out here and get his stalker, but she had gone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 let me tell you <laughs> let me tell you right to be real with you crazy at the end of the day she telling her oh i pay for this i pay for that Thank at the you. end of the day sweetie i never asked you to pay for nothing i just tell you, i was just speaking and saying what i need to do mm -hmm. if i said i need to buy a monkey in a range a monkey in a tree and you decide to go out and buy the monkey in the that's tree. her business that's her problem Thank you. So yeah. she telling her all of that. I'm like, boo -boo. well, unfortunately, I let her know things you think I don't know. I already know, you know. And that's one of the things that I do appreciate, like that you have that open dialogue. Yes, it's going to be tension or whatever. But once you have that open dialogue and everybody come to an understanding right. of where y'all at that makes the relationship last even longer. Absolutely. And, lot, and oftentimes what I see is that, you know, people hold these grudges for years and years and then they become bitter and bitter and then they get angry at each other and make a big old fuss. Like, to me, all that is just, it's too much. Life is too short. Enjoy life. For real. For That's real. why I say I can have multiple holes if I want to. Hey, let me <laughs> tell you. On that. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you, you have some man like that, you have some man like that, and you have some man like that, and like that. Right. So, at the end of the day, boo boo, if you want this, I wish you the best. <laughs> I I so, at the end of the day, boo boo, like I told can't my son, I with you. I, I can't. like I told my son, I told my son the honest truth. I said, fuck all you can. That is fucked up. No, for real. My son is 19, and I told him, fuck all you can. Why didn't he go tell and him to keep his dick in No, his no, because get it out your system now. Because you're young, you're 19, so when you get my age, you won't be out there trying to fuck okay, everything. Because right. you done been there, done that by that point. I, I get it. Okay. You understand? I guess. So you never know. Whatever. Let me tell you, how can you say you don't like fish if you never try fish? So in order for you to know what you like in a woman, you need to be trying different things. Try different females because all females is not the same. Did you tell your daughter that? No, my daughter different. She have a boyfriend. <laughs> no. and let me tell you the truth. She need, so the, it need, need to be equal thing. opportunity. She need to try all the men out there till she figure out which, which flavors. Let she her, might let like let multiple her flavors there. at multiple times. Let no, her walk that. around. <laughs> that's not the advice we about to spew now if it's good for one it gotta be good for all let me tell you the honest truth I told my dog if that's what you wanna do I can't go right ahead but remember oh my all God. that motherfucker did <laughs> so at the end of the day I'm not gonna eat some plenty game but look the thing is I told you about the case we turned back that again. shit felt the way but, <laughs> but my daddy don't feel that way and I been out there like that Hey, Figure look out. here. Let me be real. My daddy true. should have been saying, okay, let me kill you. Let me kill you there. Let me kill oh, that. Let me kill that. Okay, let me tell you. I'm just be right. with everything. And then put it on the, on the on. How can you know how you like a man to screw you if you didn't screw a couple of different men? Let's be honest. I mean, mm -hmm. let's be honest. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. All y'all females will look all you want crazy. There was one man that come step to the plate. And that nigga ain't said pass home plate. Lauren. Because nigga was a flop. He was a dud. <laughs> so how you know that, how the hell I, you know if I quit. another man roll up and I he's quit. a dud? <laughs> I'm done. So I'm done. then you have the home run, the home hitter, the home runner hitter. Uh, you have the motherfucker that's on first base. You have a third baser. And you have the motherfucker that's a dud. So at the end of the day, let's keep it real. You gotta go to a couple men to find out which way you like it. 
and how you want your body touched. Unless you want to go get your woman. Ain't nothing wrong with Let me ask you a question. When you get into a relationship with a woman, let's say you're single. When you get into a relationship with a woman, do you have a conversation about her body count? Um, yes. Yes. I do. But so, it doesn't matter to me. So no, what's, I don't ask for the body count. I ask, when was the last time you had sex with a dude? And okay. can you have kids? So at the end of the day, like this <laughs> one here, when I first met her, all I asked is just to put a head in. <laughs> and ask me, could I have kids? <laughs> <laughs> Check me, Check me, no, no, no y'all start this shit. So don't play. Let's keep it 100. No. I asked the simplest question. Can I just put the head in? <laughs> no. If I got dude, I'm I'm gonna, I'll tell you the truth. I cannot. Let's okay. keep it real. I'm a guy like this. I don't like waste my time. Right. And true. I don't I don't play the game. I ain't gonna waste my time. So let me hit it first. Get it out of the way. And if it's yeah. good, I'm sticking with it. Five years right here. I can't. Okay. If it wasn't I mean, it's good, just like test driving a new car. You like you like how it felt when you rode around the corner. So I don't believe in this 90 days bull crap. You feel me? <laughs> Give it to me in the first or second day. Let me feel it out. If it's good, I'm sticking with it. If it's not good. I can't. Boo boo, this ain't working for I me. I'm not. sorry. Wait, 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 wait. The first or second day? Why not? Not even, not even the first, not even like a month? For what? What month? Because what is she bad shit crazy? Uh, that's why I want to find out in the first two <laughs> he, days. He won't know in the first two days. Right. They can play it off. And then three or four months later, guess what? Because that's like that crazy one that was sitting outside waiting on me when I came outside. That that part. Part. Listen. Listen. Pussy good, but she crazy as hell. Crazy, crazy woman get the best pussy. So what the heck? That's what that yeah, yeah. Crazy. I mean, so at the end of the day, let's keep it real. No, mama, don't scratch your head over there. You over here scratching your head. Don't scratch your head. Because I opened the window for this. Y'all should know me. I'm, I'm listening. I don't need to subscribe to half of what you said, but I'm listening. I, I'm keeping it real. If you want to know anything about this here. I can tell you about women like galore, okay? Mm. I I could tell you about that. So true. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I give up. At the end of the day, okay? Right, baby? I'm the piper. So let me ask you about this one. And then this will be this will be our last double standard. When guys <laughs> are when guys are strongly opinionated, they are being manly. When women are, they're being a bitch. Not really. Not really. It depends. It depends on the person who feels that way. If my baby goes and sleep with a couple of dudes, they better be doing something. I don't tell you, I don't kick her ass if they ain't doing nothing for us. Know what he told me? If you go out and get somebody else, I'm gone. No. <laughs> to be real, exactly. No, let's keep it real. That's what he told me now. No, I'm going to tell you the <laughs> truth. If she goes and get somebody, like I told her, that's what you want to do. Go right ahead. But I'm going to be gone. But? At the butt. But? Ain't no but. The butt is where we all sitting on our ass right now. The butt. <laughs> but I'm going to be gone. That's hey, right. listen. Exactly. Listen. It's very interesting. Listen. Five years here. Uh -huh. Okay, five years. She ain't going no way. So, Lauren, uh, do you have an ahead. issue... Lauren, do you have an issue with them being opinionated and feeling like if you speak up too much, you're a bitch, but if he does it, he's being a man. He's, he's been, so, you know. This is my opinion. I've, I've, I've been told this multiple times. If I'm not a bitch, I'm crazy. Sure. It's always because, you know, I talk my mind. Mm -hmm. you, you know that. This is nothing new. So Everybody know me. You crazy. If I'm not a bitch, I'm crazy because... When I bring the facts to you and let you know, and I'm not being very derogatory, I'm letting you know these are what I see and this is where I need you to hold accountability of your actions. Oh man, you crazy. Oh, why you bring this shit up? Like, you know, to me, you're, you're being less than a man by owning up, for not owning up to your lack of responsibility if i'm talking to you as a woman should to her man and he's telling me oh oh man like 
you can't do this or why are you bringing this up? Because <laughs> I feel disrespected. Oh man, you crazy. Oh, that ain't how it's <laughs> like for real. No, that's why when it comes to me personally, if you can't, I'm gonna give you 100% the first day I see you. You can't handle that 100%, it ain't gonna happen because I'm not going to change who I am just to please you, regardless of who you are or what you might bring. What you see is what you get. I'm not going in between none of that. So if he fucks you stupid every time and rich as hell. Hallelujah! <laughs> I'm not, for the record, I'm not related to her. See? I'm put on the record, I'm not related. <laughs> but when we keep it real, though, no, but, keep it real. real I'm with her too. Yes. I, I'm in the background. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Man, if you, look, if you look, get somebody look, to be like look. that, bro. If, if, okay. I'm gonna stop cheating. Let me let me tell you, I'm, I'm gonna girl. be. That's my baby right here. I'm gonna be 100 percent with y'all. There is only one person that has literally got me to the point where that it had me double guessing my own actions. One person. Okay, there you. Okay. It's in an IUI. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> up. So I'm gonna just keep it quick. That one person now is is unfortunately not here but i've been happy and i'm glad that i did experience it right to know what i want in a person and what i want for myself so with that being said so, so my name, age. oh go ahead, go ahead Alex. what who uh, once again who can sit down who's a whore and who's a bitch right i just want to know Anybody find if you can find the person who came up with that scenario synopsis or scenario, please let me know. Right. Because you define who you are, not nobody else. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it doesn't have nothing to do with she's a hoe because she sleeps with multiple dudes. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because if you really want to tell it, your mommy was a hoe because she had to sleep with somebody else and somebody else, and your daddy came in the picture and made you. So you Hello. can't say nobody could say, my mama only been with one man. Tell the truth. Let's keep it 100. You can never find that. My mom only been with one man. Shut that you shit. know of. <laughs> oh, this is shut up. She was like, yeah, who is it? Shanae, Shanae, take her Look, out. I know my daddy, okay? Of course. You know. I, I would never, I would never put, put that on Elder. I would never put that on Elder Gold. Before <laughs> you my mama. Uh, and then my mom shut that mess down. Hey, Trust. So let me tell you. That was funny, Let's keep it real. And they've been together 40... 45 years, mm -hmm. something like that. So but once again, who can say that? Who, who can say that? Who's a what? Right. Label somebody for something that they do. Because mm -hmm. none of us could label that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once again, the Bible said, He who without sin. That's <laughs> the <laughs> Shanae, take us out with our final <laughs> talk about double standards. <laughs> <laughs> because he's so silly. We all. The Bible said we all fell short of the glory. Yep. Yes, stand in close of the glory of God. God. And none. Yeah. See Go ahead, Shanae. <laughs> no, just to speak to that point, I think that, and I've had that experience as far as being considered opinionated or too opinionated. And it's at the end of the day, as Lauren has shared, it's like, I'm not going to stop being who I am to fit in whatever box or category that you want to put me in. Or I shouldn't have to dim who I am or be a mute um, to appease you. And so I think that that double standard should go away. And I don't feel like you have, you feel forced to subscribe to that just because you want to stay connected to a person or you really want them in your life because you have to look long term. What else are you going to be sacrificing, right? If you don't even have a voice in your home um, or a voice or be able to speak your, your truth or, or be vulnerable and transparent with the person that you're laying with, you're connected to, then how are you expected to be that person um, outside? But we know it happens a lot of times. There are great people who, you know, women who run board boardrooms, but at home <laughs> are <laughs> Um, mute and, and silent and, and obviously that's a choice that they have made for, and probably for the sake of their relationships but to sum it all up as far as double standards again it goes back to 
you know, people can only do what we allow and, and what we have chosen to accept. And so you have to do what works for your relationship and have that communication and have those conversations. You know, we talked about it. Define what cheating is for you. Define what you would consider, you know, boundaries and if what that looks like if it's crossed. Um, have that conversation about your expectations of, of roles and, and how you're going to find that balance in your household and what happens if that that tilts or change. I'm, you know, I'm a big believer that you know a lot of people fail, especially when we look at things because people forget that family is supposed to be your first ministry, and, and we see that people are good at taking care of everything outside the house. But they struggle to keep that house, your family, your first ministry. So it may not be a other, another woman, but sometimes, or another man, sometimes the business is the mistress, right? You, you feel like a mistress to their business, or you feel like a mistress because they're, the, the church um, is, their, is their first love. And so we have to go back to that and looking at maintaining that what is going to be our first ministry, which was always meant to be your household and meant to be your family. So double standards are probably not going anywhere for a long time, but you have the ability and the right to set and establish what standards are going to work for you and the relationship you're trying to cultivate. And you're right with that because as far as double standard goes, double standard is, you know, but double standards is a full set. Let me keep it right. It's just a smoke screen. And it's based off of how other people see you, not how you see yourself. Mm. So when I say it's a full set, a full set is a smoke screen. So if you allow whatever somebody say about you, make you feel any different, then it becomes what it is. So Absolutely. you don't allow other people's opinions define you. You define yourself. Absolutely. So if you feel like I need to experience multiple partners to make my sex life different because you never know why people do what they do. You understand what I'm saying? Because you could meet a guy and the guy said, you're not experiencing the bed. How in the world you gonna get experience? Mm. You can't get experience by laying up in the bed with no, without trying. All the greatest people in the world try and fail and continuously trying and trying. So if you want to get better at certain things, you got to practice. So in some of the greatest sex people in the world, ask them how many multiple partners they had. They can tell you. You see what I'm saying? So in order for you to... So I'm not related to her, I'm gonna repeat it again. <laughs> but anyhow, so in order, to, in order to have become great at anything, everything in this world was created to be master. And in order for you to master something, no matter what it is, sex, building a house, fixing a car, you got to go through and continuously doing it and doing it. You're going to fail, might you fail the first time, but you continuously go at it. Go at it. Absolutely. And then when you go at it, guess what? Then you become a person that you could talk to anybody about what is going on in the circle. Okay, sweetie, what's going on with you in your sex life? Uh, have you ever really tried to do this? Because that's where we teach our kids because we experience the things they're going through before they even go through it. Son, daughter, don't do that. Why I can't do that? Please just don't do that. Mm -hmm. I've been there, done that. Right. So when it comes to double standard, it's just a full set of how somebody see you. And don't let nobody see you for who you see yourself for what you are worth and what Absolutely. you become. You carry yourself as a king, you carry yourself as a queen. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. And you always hold your head up regardless of whatever. Don't, oh, I'm a hoe? Guess what? Be the <laughs> I'm the best in the world. Absolutely. Get on my level. You feel me? Listen, I'm for listen. That's true. That's true. That's true. I'm it will kill them. I bet you, I bet you will see them again. At all, yeah. <laughs> because Listen, guess what? Lauren, Janae, Alex, lovely young lady I just met for the first time. I thoroughly enjoyed y'all. Thank y'all for this conversation. 
Thank y'all for bringing this to this episode. It will not be the last time y'all see these people. I thoroughly, <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed y'all. Thank you so much. Love you guys. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> Well, that's it for The Zone today. We are officially shutting it down. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And until next time, remember this. You cannot break a person who gets their strength from God.